Hello everybody, it's The Last Raider. I am back with another video. And here we go, folks. <clears throat> life come I just want to say right now. Life can come at you really fast. Okay? One minute you can be on top of the world being the big dog, the alpha male uh, in your field and then the next oh how the mighty have fallen. This is one of those instances. What we have here is a DC Nation's tweet where they were talking about uh, the new the uh, Wonder Woman variant cover from Rooster Teeth. Uh, this was a tie-in to the Wonder Woman 1984 movie that's coming out. If you saw the original video or haven't seen it yet, I'll put a link to it in the description uh, so you guys can go take a look at it later. Because I'm fortunately doing uh, videos on my iPhone, or on my smartphone here, uh, they don't let me put cards and stuff up <laughs> in my videos. So anyway, uh, or at least I don't know how to do it. But anyway, uh, you have this here. I, I did a video on how this doesn't look anything like what would be in the movie. And there was a company that, uh, War Dance Comics, they actually did a much better variant cover. But that's not what we're going to talk about right now. What we're going to talk about is what happened on this day. <laughs> oh my God. Um, this is supposed to come out on September 29th. And then this comes along. Andy Kohori, or Corey, I don't know how you say that. We'll call him Andy for short, okay? Robin, the woman who drew this, uh, who drew this atrocious thing. Robin, I am a DC editor, and I love your work. The reaction to the Wonder Woman cover on Twitter was provoked by a small group of trolls and is not representative of the larger sophisticated and enthusiastic readership. <laughs> I've come to know your art is inspiring and your response is wonderful. By the way, I am a massive simp. May I know where your fans only page is so I can start sending you money? <laughs> God, sounds like a simp. Dear Lord, white knight some more. This is August 10th, 2020 at about 5.55 a.m. All right. And I can just imagine what was going on over at D.C. All right. Because in less than 13, a little over 13 hours, this happens. Asher Elbin, amid massive layoffs at Warner Brothers, I'm getting word of an absolute bloodbath at DC Comics. Bob Harris is apparently gone. So are the editors, Mark Doyle, Brian Cunningham, and Andy Corey. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> this is bad. Jim Lee is still with the company, but no longer publisher. DC Collectibles gone entirely. I mean, you just, th this is just, I'm, I'm not going to say perfect. I'm going to say this is karma. We're going to call it karma. Because I can promise you before this happened, someone over at DC was looking through tweets and stuff. And they're like, okay, we've got all these problems over here. This is, the comic books are not making any money. We're, we're going to start trimming the fat. Where do we trim the fat at? Where do I trim the fat at? in my company. And then he looks down here. He sees this bull crap. He's like, my God, who in the hell would buy this nonsense? This is horrible. And then he looks over here and sees this, sees Andy over here simping. He's like, yep, this guy's a DC editor. Well, this is probably why most of our stuff isn't selling right now. Uh, this is the, this is the thing that I would tell everyone, you know, if you're going to do comic books, if you're going to do anything entertainment wise, there is a point where you're going to have to put all a significant amount of time into either writing, drawing, um, lettering, designing, programming, filming, um, because you're going to have to put that time and energy into it unless you want to be like these morons here, which I can tell you a lot of times DC and Marvel's work. And I'm just sitting here thinking about Marvel right now because this is coming down the line for Marvel. Wow. That's going to look like the second explosion at the Beirut plant. 
that this is the fireworks factory right before this here at DC is the fireworks factory right before the big explosion. The big explosion is going to be Marvel when they find out they're getting layoffs. That's going to wow. Can you imagine a bunch of chicks? They're like, they probably won't fire them. They might. <laughs> Disney's in bad straits right now. They might get rid of them regardless of the Twitter mob. They'd be like, look, we can either appease the Twitter mob and die, or we can live. It's, it's what it, what is the scene from The Walking Dead? It's the fat guy and Jane, Jamie, I think is his name. Shane. Shane. It's the fat guy and Shane. And Shane shoots him in the leg and leaves him to die. <laughs> it's like, I was going to bring you back. I'm sorry. I don't think we can make it. No, I'm going to make it. Boom. Shoots him in the leg and leaves him to die. That's going to be what Marvel's ultimately going to have. Disney's going to ultimately have to make the decision and they're just going to have to take the hit. They're like, we're going to take the hit. There's no way we can do this. We're, we're going to have to take the hit. We got to find out who, who is our talent, who we can't replace. And the Twitter, the Twitter explosion is going to be massive. But back to what I was saying, if you're going to sit here and do this because Marvel and DC, if you ever see their stuff, if you've ever picked up any of their current comics, a lot of times they're very rushed. They're piss poor stories with very rushed art with a lot of 3D um, designs in the background, 3D tent, uh, three dimensional crap in the background. Um, a lot of times 3D tracing. A lot of times it's just constant tracing. That's all it is. It's just they're tracing multiple different people. Uh, there's one particular book with Captain Marvel where Captain Marvel's boobs keep changing size because they they had like they have multiple different models they were pulling off of multiple different pictures. It, it's one thing to pull pictures. It's another thing to, you know, just if you need a model that badly, just dedicate a model, take some pictures of her. Because it's about the build that you want Captain Marvel to have and then go from there. There was one point where Captain Marvel's flat chested as frick next to an actual actress who had double D's in the comic book. I'm not kidding. And then it goes, she flies off into space and her boobs just power up for some <laughs> It's like Goku's hair uh, when he goes Super Saiyan, just goes, boom, you know, his hair pops up, his muscles bulge. Uh, Captain Marvel powers up, her boobs get bigger. <laughs> it was like, I've gone Super Titty mode, <laughs> Super Tittyan or something like that. Um, I wonder if this is going to get kicked off for me talking about tits. <laughs> Probably going to have to redo this video later. But anyway... No, I mean, you, you have people who are rushing it because they spend all their time doing this, okay? Talking about how they're an editor, how they are, and they, they go out there and they, they simp and virtue signal and act like a complete cuck on the internet for all this social justice crap, either because they buy into the nonsense or they're afraid of the people that are causing the nonsense. And... I would just tell people, look, you got to get out there, put your head down, get your project done. That's what you need to do. Uh, there is no reason to go out there and give people what one crazy person. Let, let me let me tell you this: if you you can tell who appreciates your art more, because they will accept your art. Uh, over to this, I'm quite certain there's a group of people out there that just accept this chick's art and doesn't tell her what to change. I will say this, this is the wrong type of art for a comic book superhero. They should not have picked this person. Uh, they should have picked someone else. There were so many, so many variations of that cover done by fans that were, all of them were better than this. All of them were more heroic than this. All of them were better. Some were, some were even better than others. I, there was one that I got. Goddamn mosquito is flying around my head. And it is too dark for me to see that motherfucker. Hold on. And he flew away. Okay. <sighs> Here I, I feel like Saitama right now. <laughs> Stupid bugs. Bugs suck. Anyway. No, I mean... 
I kind of lost my train of thought there for a second. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not the type of person that you, this is not the type of art that you want on your comic book. You want heroic art. Um, there was one book I remember seeing a while back that I was, I re, as a guy, I was interested in. It's about uh, three girls who turn into giant chicks in bikini battle armor. And I was like, now let's. Well, you know, they're, they're all on the ultra-thick side. They all look really good, and uh, I'd be interested in going in there and getting it. And that's the thing about stuff. If you were to, and also, I mean, you, when you think about comics, you want a character that's, you know, inviting, okay? You want someone who has, you know, the good build or looks feminine or looks, you know, either sexy in some sort of way. It, it's like, what was it? Perry White said in the uh, Lois and Clark series, there's only three things that sell sex, scandal, and Superman. And here's the thing. We have all, we don't have any real scandals. We don't have any sex and we don't have any Superman right now. Uh, they don't have none of this at current Marvel and the people that are currently running it because they have idiots like this who are going in there. They're not doing their work. They're out here on Twitter all the time telling everyone how sorry they are, which I told one person, they're like, oh, you know, it's bad you're going to look a four ninety nine comic book. And I'm like, well, it's it's not that I don't want to buy a four ninety nine comic book. I would pay four ninety nine for a good comic book. But here's the thing. I go to church to get preached at about how I'm a sinner and how I screw up in life. And I get that for free three times a week. Why would I pay four ninety nine to get that monthly also? Just, I don't see a reason with that. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I buy more Comicsgate stuff because they do more. Because Comicsgate does more heroes. They do better stories. Uh, you can't get good stories almost now. And, and you go to, I've been to comic stores back when I went uh, this weekend. The reason why I stopped having doing so many videos all the time and I'm getting back into it. Went off on a one week vacation, tried to do it, and then. I was going to use my wife's car as kind of like an in a pointful studio because it may, has really good acoustics to a point. But then it was like, oh, I can't do that because the car game got put in the shop. But anyway, long story short, went over to a comic shop that I like to frequent when I'm down there over at Crestview. And, or not Crestview. Damn, I forgot what that stupid place is. It's a Fort Walton, Fort Walton Beach. Went over there. Went into the comic shop, and I bought a whole bunch of good stuff, but I never buy anything new. And that's the way I am with almost every comic shop. You go in there, and you can't trust what's on the covers. Mind you, this is going to be a book about the movie, so the art is not going to match what's inside. Absolutely not. And you don't know what you're. You don't want to know what's there. You don't want to pick up the book. And, and read through every single book. So if I'm, if I'm going to read the books there, what's the point of buying them and taking them home? <laughs> I mean, dear God. And so what I did was I bought two Conan classics and I bought J. Scott Campbell's Danger Girls graphic novel from IDW, which was one of the best things IDW ever made. Uh, seeing Sydney Savage get unzipped almost down to her knees before she takes the bad guy out because she's trying to get him to unzip her. So she's like, I got to really pee. And he's unzipping her almost down to nothing. That, you, you can't get past hot chicks kicking ass. The problem is we don't get hot chicks kicking ass. We get this chick right here trying to fight heart disease and, and drastically losing. Like, we don't even know if... I'm pretty sure she's wearing a lasso. We just can't see it because she's so freaking fat. And I hate to be like that, but this is not what you think of when you see superheroes. Now, you can have joke heroes. You can have heroes going, uh, you know, kind of trying almost playing opposite world to an extent. You know, have a fat chick that can fly. I don't see a problem with that if that is the purpose of the character. But taking a known character who's supposed to be, you know, a Greek goddess, essentially what a Wonder Woman is, she's a Greek goddess. She is physical perfection because she's literally a goddess. She is physical perfection. And then turning around and doing something stupid like this is irritating. But the fun part is, it appears now that some of these idiots that have been doing this at, Mar at Marvel and DC, Marvel is coming up. 
I mean, I'm making that prediction right now. Marvel is going to be a massive blow up. Like I said, imagine the Beirut explosion. This with DC is just the little fireworks that was going off before. The big one's going to be when Marvel starts laying off. That's going to be hilarious. That because Marvel, I can tell you why. Marvel has a lot of people that are really like this. Only they are 100 times more vain and 300 times less disciplined. Mm. And when they get laid off, holy shit, is it going to hit the fan on Twitter. It might even make the 12 o'clock news. Uh, Normie News may actually talk about this. It'll get so bad. <laughs> I'm telling you. But anyway, like I said, if you're going to do it in the comic industry or any entertainment industry whatsoever, limit your time on Twitter. I'm usually on Twitter about three times a day. That's it, for about an hour, about three hours a day. That's what I put in Twitter, if I'm lucky, if I don't have a lot to do. Sometimes I'll skip getting on Twitter for lunch. Twitter is just good to go on there, find stuff for videos, and see what other people are doing. I, I do use Twitter to find out who's putting what out there. I try to find out what Comicscape books are coming out, because that's how I'm finding out where my good books are. That's what I usually use Twitter for, and the occasional pissing off the lefties. But <laughs> some, sometimes I get myself into trouble. I did this weekend. I kind of got myself in a little bit of trouble with some lefties uh, all back. And then you're just going back and forth. I'm like, wow, some of these idiots are just fucking crazy. I'm just going to very quietly shut up and let them fight amongst themselves for a bit. Once I started fighting amongst themselves, like, yeah, we better back off on this because this is going to take way too much time to deal with. But anyway, um, like I said, get out there, do the job. Do it properly and put your best foot forward. I'm not saying you'll always succeed, but here's the thing. You would much rather, I would much rather be fired doing my job and doing it well than to be fired for not doing my job. I would much rather be laid off because the company can't afford me anymore than to be laid off because the company, because I'm not benefiting the company at all. I've been laid off like that. I, wa I ended up being laid off from one of my first jobs, and they laid me off. They said, we don't want to let you go. They said, you, you're you working hard. You're getting stuff done. Unfortunately, you're the low man on the totem pole. They said, that's the only reason we're letting you go. They said, it has nothing to do with the job you've done for us. And I, I, you know, I took the L. I was like, well, you know what? That's nice to hear. I'm glad I was appreciated at least. They offered me a job, and, and I'm doing other work now but anyway tell me what you think in the comments about this you know are, are we see we're we're starting to see what i think is the beginning of the end uh at least for sjw uh, at least for sjw is running roughshod for a while i think we're going to get an era of peace for a little bit there's going to be this little era of peace because a lot of the sjws in comics they're going to get immediately phased out. Uh, I don't think it's going to last forever because as soon as the good times, they're going to, here's what, here's my prediction. They're going to correct this nonsense. We're going to see a lot of SJWs get kicked out, but the core problem with these companies is the hiring practices. Now, if all y'all have listened to Richard Myers, he always states they go for SJWs, get into a company, they go for a position of influence. In other words, HR is full of SJWs. Unless they fire everyone in HR, expect this nonsense. Finally got that mosquito snatched right up there and killed his sorry ass. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, what, what I say will happen is this. They will get rid of the, the people that are there. You'll have the most valuable artists, writers, letterers, inkers, and colorists. And they'll turn out some good shit. And when times start to get good, the HR department will be given leeway to hire more people. They'll try to phase out the talent that they've got currently, and then they will hire back all SJWs. Uh, right now, the cancer is in the lymph nodes. And the only thing you can really do is, uh, it, I know it's not possible, but the only thing you can really do is rip out all the lymph nodes and put new ones back in. It's going to take a complete... It's like a car that needs a complete rebuild, okay? There's nothing in the engine that can be salvaged. You've got to rip the whole engine, drivetrain, transmission, muffler system, uh, 
gas pump system, the tank, everything out of the car and replace all of it with brand new parts because it is completely shot. Uh, you, you can probably tinker a little bit and get a few more miles out of it before it finally spitters and putters back out. Something else is just going to break down the line. You're gonna, they're going to have to go into DC and completely rip it out. Marvel will have to have the same thing done eventually. Does it mean they'll be gone completely? No. Uh, in some capacity, I think eventually what will happen is I know for a fact that DC will eventually outsource all of their the new comics, which gives a lot of fans an opportunity, but it's going to be a double-edged, it's going to be kind of a bittersweet thing because what will happen is when they put out, when they start sending out like Superman to other people, you're not going to get the very best because the very best artists and writers and everything, it's like uh, Meyer said, unless you really want to write Super Duck, you're not going to be happy working for these companies. They're going to take a good chunk of money. Now, the best part about it, the, the one saving grace would be you'd have some good, talented people might get out there and do Superman comics for a bit just to get their name out there so then they can do crowdfunding later on their own uh, gig, their own comic book. But unless DC finds a, a freelance artist and writers that just want to write Superman, especially, or any other character... Uh, it's it's going to be changing a lot. They're just going to be a proving ground for artists, basically. Which is sad, because the company... I mean, I grew up with The Flash and Green Lantern and Superman and Batman. I mean, they were some of my favorite characters. Batman Beyond was my favorite. Terry McGinnis, in my opinion, was the true successor to Batman. And lo and behold, all that is just shot all to hell. <laughs> I'm at the point now where I'm like... I really don't want them to make any more movies or new comics until everything has collapsed and burned and then they rebuild better than what it was originally. But I figure eventually Marvel will get to that point as well. Um, it'll just take them longer to get there because they have more capital than DC has. But anyway, folks, I've, I've rattled on enough. Tell me what you think about it in the comments. Uh, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And hit the bell for notification. It helps out the channel. And I put out videos constantly. Anyway, I'd also like to personally thank uh, War Dance Comics for putting me up on their Facebook. That helped out with the views. You guys are awesome. And as usual, stay safe, stay frosty. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.